I'm Johannes Devos, music director of the Canadian Opera Company in Toronto. I've led the acclaimed CUC Orchestra for more than a decade. And I'd like to introduce you to some of my incredible colleagues. Today, we are focusing on Benjamin Britten's Peter Grimes and a very special instrument. Peter Grimes is about a town of fishermen who live by the sea and die by it too. The title character is questioned over the death of an apprentice and shunned over the controversy. Britain, as a composer, was still quite young when he produced this. And yet, Peter Grimes is considered a 20th century masterpiece. In just a moment, we're going to speak with Shelley Brown. Shelley plays the flute and piccolo with the CUC Orchestra. But today, I want to talk about the piccolo, as it features prominently in this opera. What is the most fun about playing the piccolo are the colors that it adds to the orchestra. It, it's a bit of icing on the top. It's a, it's a, a bit of foam. It's some thrill. It's, a, it's an excitement. But it can also be a very lyrical instrument. And some, some composers take advantage of that more than others do. Mm -hmm. Britain, I enjoy so much playing this opera because he utilizes the full range of the instrument. Bottom register, even when you really can't hear it all that well within the texture of the orchestra, but it goes up to the top and down to the bottom and around, and he brings it out kind of as Stravinsky does. He uses it in, in this beautiful kind of color-like way so that it, it sparkles, and, and it's, it's so much fun. I love playing this opera. It's an amazingly fun opera to play. Here, it's probably more the upper register of the instrument that is featured, less so the, the lower notes, which um, have, as you described, a very special color too. Um, what would you say technically for you as the, the musician to play it is the, the difficulty here of this moment? In this excerpt, the difficulty is jumping in to a very different mood in a split second mm -hmm. and being on top of, of just the speed because it's always going to go faster than you think it, should, it will. <laughs> and the, you can practice it as fast as you want, but it always goes a bit faster. And I find that the, um, the adrenaline of that moment always carries you through. And you're not alone either. When you, when you hear me play it, I will be alone and it'll be a little more exposed. So you will hear the bottom of the register, but within the texture of the orchestra at that moment, you can't hear that. So when you're playing the piccolo and you're concentrating so much through the entire opera and you're playing so many notes, sometimes those little moments where you're lost in the texture, that's your resting point. So you get a couple of moments there where, where you go, okay, I can just regroup here, and then you're off and running again for yes. the rest of the excerpt. Yeah. So it's, um, it's very dramatic, and it can get away from you very easily. But, but usually within the context of the performance, it's, it, you just, it's like you're riding a horse. You're, just, you're going, and you can't think about it, because if you start thinking about it, you're going to fall off or falter, one or the other. So, so you have this momentum that, you, that carries you through moments like this that, that is, it's exhilarating, and you really can't think about it too much, or you start to second-guess yourself. And that's, that's the challenge. Yeah, we, we know about Britain that, um, I mean, he was a master of orchestration, no doubt. He knew how to use even a um, small group of musicians, of instruments to make the greatest effects. Like in Turn of the Screw, you have 15 people sitting in the pit and it sounds like a, a, a large orchestra. Um, he also gained a lot of experience in writing film scores um, or radio plays. Um, Etc. He also spent some time here in North America, as we know, even here in Toronto. Um, and whenever I go back to, to Peter Grimes, listen to that music, I also feel that there's a great deal of um, tunes that might come from sort of this part of the world or rhythms that um, come from this part of the world. It's extremely vital. And... Um, there are some scenes where you have just the, the, the singers, a cappella, there is literally nothing, 
and it goes through those moments of, of culmination where the full orchestra sort of depicts the, the, the colossal powers of the sea. He uses the orchestra in a very interesting way. He will sometimes have us be a backdrop, so we're the sea or we're the sky or, or just a mood. Um, and then he'll bring us in, in small groups, woodwinds and violins separately, to, to almost be another character in the opera. So you have this wonderful juxtaposition of almost chamber music within these massive orchestrations. And he'll switch from one to the next in, in seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's also what makes it really fun to play because you have to be always on top of everything that's happening. You have to be thinking ahead. With flute and piccolo, you're, you're always trying to make sure you're picking up the right instrument because <laughs> that happens. <laughs> so, but, but, it's, um, but I think the film aspect of it is the, the characterization of, of the crowd in the orchestra that you hear. You hear um, personalities in the orchestra. Not so much the themes exactly attached to the characters, but more the mood of the characters and the mood of the scene that gets brought forward by the orchestra. And I love this particular excerpt that I'm playing today is so weird. I, it's the most turbulent of the interludes. Mm. And in the, in the suite, it's last, but here it's second in the opera. And it starts with this roiling sea in the bottom of the orchestra and everything's burbling and crashing away. And then all of a sudden there's this weird break with this unusual little snippet that gets thrown into the middle of it. And I don't know what he was thinking, if it was you know, a bunch of people on shore looking or if it's a flock of seagulls or it, I don't know, the sun breaks through for a second. But I think it's only referenced again once in the rest of the opera and then it's like, back to the turbulence again. <laughs> so I think it's a really interesting little moment within the scene. It's an exciting instrument. It adds so much color and special colors to the orchestral textures. It's a terrifying instrument, actually, <laughs> <laughs> because it, it actually wields a great deal of power. You always, you can ride on the top of a Wagner orchestra and you will hear the piccolo. So that's very thrilling to be part of, but it's also, it f feels like a, a great deal of responsibility. Is, is it well. a bit like the, the small dogs that can <laughs> bark right. uh, very loudly? Exactly. Um,